Today we're going to look at lessons six and eight tenths, expressing and interpreting remainders. And as you can see from my funny little R here, we're going to look at whether we're going to ignore the remainder, share it, round it, and we're also going to look at some other things like reporting it as a fraction. So why are we doing a lesson on remainders and figuring out what to do with them? Well, as we get better at dividing numbers, a lot of times you're going to have a remainder and you have to know what to do with that remainder. Sometimes it's going to require you to ignore it because it depends on the problem. Sometimes it's going to require you to round up to give an answer. For example, if you were buying some kind of table set and you need a certain number of chairs. And sometimes we might be recording an answer as a fraction. So we're going to take a look at each one of those scenarios and try to figure out how to handle it. So let's say we have this scenario. We've got 13 sticks of gum and we've got three friends. They want to divide the gum up equally. They all want to get the exact same amount. So as you can see, I've divided this up using pictures. So I made three circles for the three friends and I counted until I got to 13. So this means that each person would have four full sticks of gum. But my problem is, what do I do with the one that I have left over? In this particular instance, what I would do is I would take that one stick of gum and I would divide it into three pieces. Let's make that a little bit better. And that would mean that each person would now get four and one third sticks of gum. So this would be an instance where we would divide up the object and record it as a fraction. So here's another example. Let's say that we have 68 guests coming to a wedding and only six people can sit at a table. So we have to figure out how many tables would be needed. And as you can see, I've drawn tables and I've put sixes inside of each of the tables to try to figure out how many tables it would take. And as you can see, I have 11 of these tables as you go through and count them. And that only adds up to 66. So that means I have a remainder of two. So what do I do with this remainder in this situation? That means I have two guests that don't have any place to sit. What would we do? That would mean that we would have to add another table for those two people to sit. So if I were going to answer this question as far as how many tables do I need, I'm going to say 12 tables. And in this instance, we had to round up because we couldn't cut a table into pieces for someone to sit. So this was one example of that particular situation. So here's another example. Um, we have a couple of friends that there's 13 toy cars for them to play with, but they're trying to divide them up evenly. So as you can see, I did a very basic division problem here and divided 13 by two, and I got six with a remainder of one. So what is my remainder? That means that I have one car left over, one toy car. Now we can't divide a toy car and we can't put it into a fraction, so this would be an example where we would ignore the remainder. So when asked how many cars does each person get, you would then answer six cars. Okay, so in class we will continue to look at division number stories and decide what to do with the remainder to provide a useful answer. We've got this and you'll do great. Can't wait to see you.